Dear learners and listeners, welcome to NIOS. Today, we are going to learn about play center and its structural details. As you all know, in the last lesson, we talked about the objectives of the play center. In this uh, program, we would be knowing that if we set up a play center, what should be the structural details that what should be there inside the play center, how a play center should look like. So let's begin. The play center is a space for 2 to 5 years old to come and play, explore and interact. In order that they may do so, it safely and may develop uh, to their uh, best uh, potentials, one needs to focus on the details of setting up a play center. If you have already visited a good play center, you must have observed that it has space for various activities and not only children but you also feel good standing among children and other things. Why do you think you feel good? Is the space the only reason? What are the other factors that make a play center good? So dear learners, the objectives of today's program are at the end of this program, you would be able to gain knowledge about the physical structure and facilities in a play center. You would be able to furnish the information regarding the equipments and the material that is required in a play center as well as you would also be able to enumerate some uh, prerequisites of the play center stuff. So let's begin with the location and space requirement that what kind of location is required and how much space is required to set up a play center. A play center that is to provide a play and activity based program definitely needs adequate amount of space. Of course, the other requisites are site, safety, sanitation and ventilation. The play school should be located at the site that is easily accessible to the children. And it is also safe from uh, different kinds of hazards or dangers like heavy traffic, ponds, ditches, pollution, etc. So that it is good for the children who are coming to the play center and it is feasible for them to reach in the play center. The next important step is the space and its organization for various activities. Within the play school, play areas can be outdoors and indoors. Let us first discuss about the outdoor play areas. Do you know how much space is required for a child to play outside? Well, it is minimum area of 3 to 5 square meters per child. Hard surface where toys with wheels can be used and balls can be bounced because the children actually play with the balls and uh, they roam around on the uh, different types of toys or cycles or scooters in the play centers. There should be provision for grassy lawn as well, where children can play, run, do gardening and have safe uh, and have sandbox and pets. That is for the exposure of the children to the outside environment. Now, what are the precautions that needs to be taken uh, in such an area? This area should regular in outline for easy supervision. It should have a securely fenced for safety so that nobody is coming in and the children are not getting hurt and they are also not going out. It is free from nails, nails, rocks, broken uh, parts and glass pieces so that children do not get hurt. And it should be away from the pits, water tanks, etc. and with clear pathways. So the precautions are kept in mind, keeping in mind the safety of the children in all the manners. So minimum area of a play center or uh, square meters per child, it should be adaptable, flexible and viable. Suppose for example, if you want to bring in more things, then you can introduce those things in the play center. So it should be adaptable and flexible. It should be facilitative uh, of supervision so that it is easy for the uh, teachers uh, to have a uh, watch on the children, what they are doing in different areas of the play center. They are easily visible, the children who are in the play center. It should be well ventilated and have adequate light uh, and the walls should be clean and well plastered. Uh, this is also related to the health of the children. It is necessary for the healthy environment of, for the children. And uh, the walls should have ample space for display of children's work and other pictorial material. This also gives a very decorative look to the play center. 
Apart from these uh, facilities or such an area which is required in the place center, uh, which is uh, as we have discussed the walls which are to be neat and clean and well decorated and how much space is required, we have already discussed. Apart from that, uh, there should be a mat and a set of low and light tables so that if the children are falling down, they do not get hurt. And uh, it should be for a group of 6 to 8 children for uh, art, work, etc. Suppose for example, uh, the teacher gives them something to draw. So if the children are drawing and while drawing, uh, they get intermingled with each other or uh, they uh, fall down, then also they do not get hurt. They, it should have the provision of blackboard at low levels for scribbling, etc. because Children at this stage like to scribble a lot and it should have racks for putting children's belongings, toys, etc. And it should have a place for self-expression. That is, if the student want to dance, they want to do some dramatic play and uh, uh, the music appreciation has to be done for the children, then ample amount of space should be there in the play center. Now, what kind of space is required for interaction with the environment? Something which we have discussed in the previous slides was related to what should be the uh, inside of the play center. The walls, the mat doors, the kind of furniture which is to be there in the uh, play center. Now, what kind of an environment should be there outside? So, it includes the garden space for flowers, vegetables, fruits, small space for rabbits and bird cages. A uh, bird nest, indoor science corners, offering opportunities to the child to explore, uh, experiment and understand uh, the nature. For example, in order to understand or explore the nature, you might give a tub to the uh, little children where water uh, and the tub is filled with water. You put in the hard toys and the soft toys and the plastic toys so that the children explore what sinks in and what floats on the water. So, uh, uh, that is for explore, uh, exploration of the children. Then comes that the facility for drinking water should also be very hygienic uh, in the play center. It should have a clear and pure drinking water and there should be provision for washing the utensils also. Most important is the sanitary fa facilities. The sanitary facilities in a play center should have clean Indian type toilet that should be provided with adequate water facilities. Uh, there should be provision of soap and towel and there should be provision of a dustbin also. Many children, those who come to the play center, some children are there who uh, enroll in for a day long program. So, the facility for sleeping for the children should also be there. This is required when the play center is uh, functioning for full days as I said that some uh, children are coming for day long programs. Uh, so, for them uh, sleeping facility is required. Children must uh, definitely sleep for some time because this is necessary for their healthy growth and this is for the purpose uh, besides uh, space, clean mat or mattresses, sheets and pillows are also required to be there in the sleeping area of the little children. There should be adequate uh, storage facility uh, in the play center. It is required for keeping the children's play items and uh, their, the kitchen utensils and it is also used for the snacks provided to the children. In the play center, kitchen area is also required because kitchen uh, in the kitchen area, the cook cooks the meals for the little children who are coming to the play center. Who, meals are provided in the play center. So, when we are talking about the kitchen area, the kitchen area should be well ventilated, it should be spacious and it should uh, be uh, easy to clean uh, the kitchen whenever it is required and it should have an ample space for cooking, washing and storage of utensils etc. Now, let us understand that what kinds of equipments are there in the play center. What should be kept in this play center to attract uh, the little children or to keep them against? Now, a play center requires a variety of play equipments in order to provide children with interesting and challenging experiences. 
uh, something which I discussed that there are different kinds of toys that are there in the play center, uh, there uh, in the play area or in the experimental area you provide them with different kinds of activities. There are uh, kits uh, for becoming the doctor, uh, there is a place where there is a washing machine which is placed, uh, there, there is a tub which is filled with water and where the uh, children enjoy and learn that what sinks in the water, what kind of material sinks in the water and what floats. Some basic points of the development level of the children, durability, safety, complexity, etc. Everything needs to be kept in mind while purchasing or using any equipment. There are also certain other characteristics that need to be taken into account like the educational characteristics of the equipments that are there in the play center. Then when we are talking about the educational characteristics, first of all there should be no discrimination between the toys of uh, the boys and girls and uh, the toys should be strong and long lasting. Uh, it is also necessary that uh, uh, it provides for the choice and gradual, uh, graduated changes among the children and it involves the child's imagination. So what a uh, child is able to do with the toys? is also very important. Suppose there are different blocks uh, in the play center, the, the small little blocks. So the blocks will keep the child engaged. The child would uh, keep working with the uh, blocks and through his or her own imagination, the child would be able to uh, build uh, a lot of things. So the play, the educational equipment should involve the imagination of the child and it should also encourage the cooperation among the children also. Then there are certain design characteristics that is it should be of multi-use, the, uh, the equipment should be safe and especially it should be child safe and uh, uh, it should be made of different materials like wood, rubber, metal, rope etc. And uh, uh, it should be proportionate and uh, quantitative as well as flexible. Whatever equipments are there in the play center. Now, uh, uh, apart from the design and the educational characteristics of the toys or the material that is to be there in the play center, there is a very important uh, requirement that is what are the constructional characteristics of the play center. Uh, it has to be uh, the place, the furniture inside the play center should be child centric, which means that it should be built uh, according to the needs and the uh, uh, the characteristics of the little children. So it should be slim, uh, for example, it should be splinter free wood, uh, it should be sturdy hardware, it should be dependable that is always uh, works, uh, it should be cost effective and economic also that is also very important and the equipment can be repaired. Uh, now there is outdoor and indoor play equipments, outdoor play equipments are different and indoor play equipments are different, let us understand what are these equipments. I will be providing you a list of play equipments that could be uh, provided in a play center. However, the type of play equipments and the number will depend on the number and age of the children, outdoor and indoor play space and the funds available for the purchase and maintenance of the play equipments in a play center. The list of equipments which is uh, given in the uh, upcoming slides may be provided for a group of uh, 33 to 40 children in a play center if adequate funds are available. So uh, there are certain equipments that are given uh, for example if there are swings then it should be 2 in number, there are tricycles it should be 3 in number, uh, if it is a jungle gym it should be 1 in number, uh, if it is a rubber ball it should be 2 in number like that for different equipments uh, we have given that what are the equipments that are required and what are the number of equipments that are to be there in the play center. Uh, uh, then there should be one set of small buckets, tumblers, etc. Likewise, these are the, it is a list of the number of things and the kind of things that are to be there in the play center. Uh, there are uh, some other uh, list which is provided in these slides that what is the number of uh, the items that are required to be there in the play center that is the quantity which is to be there and what kind of uh, equipment should be there in the play center. So in these slides you would get to know a fair idea about what are the equipments and what is the number of equipments, those equipments that should be there in the play center. Please have a look on these slides.
uh, we have uh, in the list we have also mentioned that there should be a musical uh, instrument in the play center uh, there should be different uh, there should be drums jingle bells etc in the play center and it should be two in each it should be one set of these uh, things should be there in the uh, play center which is for example it is hammer and nails it is piece of uh, soft wood etc uh, then there are certain beads that are to be uh, there in the play center what kind of what are the number of beads that is there in uh, the list uh, then uh, uh, in in this given list there are that is uh, how many puppets should be there uh, the rabbit or the cages should be there so that it uh, gives an exposure to the children uh, for the outside environment as well in the storytelling session the teacher would require a picture book puppets or uh, items that are related to storytelling there should be a blackboard or a chalkboard and uh, other things like there should be a clay and uh, uh, scissors uh, scissors obviously uh, the children would not be using but the te uh, teacher would be using for making uh, various craft uh, uh, activities for the children uh, there should be gum bottle etc in the play center so as far as possible arrange the material in a way that children can use uh, them directly further any damaged material should be replaced as soon as possible low cost equipment can also be created by using things in the environment for example empty cartons cloth pieces newspapers thermocoles etc they can all be used to make different kinds of equipments in the play center then it is very important that there should be a first aid kit in the play center it is required because the kit should have the following material in it it should have a bandage it should have a thermometer it should have a sticking plaster it should have scissors uh, it should have sterilized or surgical cotton and antiseptic ointment as well as a gaze and a gentian violet uh, these all are required suppose for example some kid has come to the play center some child has come to the play center and the child has fever so how would you check the fever it should be with the help of a thermometer if the child gets hurt in the play center so what would be used for uh, curing that uh, hurt so that is why a first aid uh, kit is a must in the play center now uh, up till now we have all uh, talked about the kind of uh, uh, equipments that are to be there indoor and outdoor and what kind of location should be there for setting up a play center but there should be human resources also in the play center that means the play center should have a staff so what kind of staff is needed in the play center there should be a teacher there should be an assistant and a cook so the teacher in the play center has a key influence on the quality of service provided uh, she is a person responsible for the activities and programs conducted in the play center to achieve the established goals and objectives that we discussed in the uh, last program uh, necessary training in the area is an important qualification for the teacher uh, the teacher should have undergone the vocational course or diploma course in play center management or in preschool organization certain other qualifications are required of a play center teacher she should have an understanding of the specific aims and objectives of organizing the different uh, programs in the play center and uh, it must be having a thorough knowledge that where and how to organize the play center activities uh, 10th standard or uh, uh, two, plus 2 years of training or 12th standard uh, pass plus 1 year of training is required for the teacher not less than uh, 18 years of age that means the teacher must be 18 years of age and should be aware of the material that is needed in a play center and how to use that material meaningfully. Uh, as I said an assistant has uh, should also be there in the play center the housekeeping services needed at any play center like uh, cleaning uh, washing the linen care of the playground and floor changing pictures on the bulletin and papers on the uh, easel board uh, laying out equipments and minding equipments and other items in a play center so these all are done by the assistant who is there in the play center the assistant should love the children and be ready to care for them at all times 
Since the children spend much of the time on the floor, the floor must be clean thoroughly. The assistant needs to be on duty in the toilet room and washing area, helping the children and the teacher to handle the situation effectively. She should have passed at least 8th standard. If the play center includes meal program, the teacher plans a menu, supervises the preparation and serving of food. Meal preparation requires a cook on the staff list. The cook must have clean habits and observe them in the cooking area. Uh, that is, the uh, teacher should observe that uh, the uh, cook is cooking the food uh, in, a, in an appropriate manner. The cook should be ready to take decisions from the teacher to prepare nutritious and tasteful food on time and uh, should have uh, knowledge of reading and writing. It is a very important note that though the number of staff is influenced by the program, finance, building provision of the equipment, number of children, uh, our uh, age of the children, training of the teacher, etc. There should be one adult for every 10 to 15 children. There are certain responsibilities of a teacher in the play center and it is very important. Let's understand what are the responsibility of a teacher in the play center. A play center teacher has certain responsibilities to self, to children, school and community. In fact, these responsibilities can be taken as the characteristics of a good teacher who is the pivot around which the whole functioning of the play center revolves and depends. I would be explaining uh, the responsibilities of a teacher in the following slides. First of all, what is the responsibility of the teacher to herself? So, the teacher should remain in good physical and emotional health at all times. And uh, she should be progressive, enthusiastic always and uh, the teacher should update herself and should uh, grow professionally. There are certain responsibilities and very important uh, that a teacher uh, must uh, have for the children. These responsibilities are uh, the teacher should be able to meet the needs of the children and enjoy working and being with them. So it is always required uh, whenever an advertisement is given that uh, a teacher is required in a place center. So the requirement is, uh, it is also mentioned in the requirement that teachers should love working with the children. Uh, she should respect uh, the uh, children as individuals and build, try to build in the desirable relationship with the children and help children build a good self-image. There are certain responsibilities that a teacher has towards the parents. So what is the responsibility of the teacher towards the parents is that she should provide counseling uh, to the good counseling to the parents who are coming uh, to the play center and enrolling their kids in the play center. And she should also value the ideas if the parents are coming uh, up with certain ideas for their kids or for uh, the uh, kids in general. And uh, the teacher should plan uh, with uh, the parents for the well-being of the child and uh, she should be able to bridge a gap between the home and the school environment. There are uh, responsibilities of the teacher to other staff members also. As I said, the assistant in the play center would take the uh, directions from the uh, would take the directions from the teacher and the assistant would help the teacher in conducting the different activities and in managing kids as well as the cook will also take the uh, take the directions from the teachers. So uh, the responsibilities of the teacher towards other staff are she should support the ideas and knowledge of other staff members and value their ideas. Also, uh, she should involve all the staff members in the program. There are certain responsibilities that a teacher has towards the community in general. The teacher in the play center needs to fulfill the following re responsibilities towards the community which should be that she should be aware of the problems of the community and try to solve them and participate in local professional organization uh, pertaining to the welfare of the children so that she is able to understand that what are the upcoming issues or the requirements of the little children. That comes in that how the teacher updates herself or grows professionally. So dear learners, this was all about the structural details 
that are required to set up a place center in which we talked about that what kind of location should be there which is that it should be feasible, it should be free from pollution and traffic. We also discussed that what is the uh, uh, what is uh, what square meter area is required for setting up a play center. It depends upon the number of children and there is a space which is required per square meter for uh, per child. We also discussed that what kinds of equipments should be there in the play center and what are the characteristics of the equipments. It should be flexible, it should be adaptable, it should be repairable. Also, we talked about that if it, there is a furniture in the place center that what kind of furniture should be used, what kinds of things to avoid in the place center so that the children do not get hurt. And even if the children are getting hurt, we should have a first aid kit in the place center. Apart from this, we also discussed that what kind of staff should be there in the place center then we, uh, in which we discussed that there is a teacher in the place center. There is an assistant in the play center as well as there is a cook in the play center. So, the assistant and the cook helps the teacher in managing the program and in helping her uh, managing all the activities. There is a responsibility of uh, the teacher also that she should involve the entire staff in all the programs. The assistant takes care of the children in the uh, play area, in the toilet area and helps manage the kids. The cook also uh, cooks the hygienic food and the healthy food for the children and keeps the kitchen area clean. Uh, then uh, we talked about that there are certain responsibilities that a teacher has towards the different people uh, in the system uh, that is the teacher's responsibility towards the kids that is she should be all in all uh, able to understand the needs of the children. Uh, responsibilities to the uh, towards the parents is that she should be able to bridge the gap between the home environment and the school environment for the children as well as she should uh, consider the parents point of view, uh, do good counselling to, to the parents so that parents also understand that if they are not able to understand their child so where are, where are they lacking so this is the responsibility of the teacher then uh, the teacher has responsibility towards the community also she should uh, grow herself she should meet with different communities she should uh, know that what are the upcoming issues of the children she should work with the government or the non-government organization that are working towards the children so dear learners this was all about today's uh, program i hope you could understand the structural details that are there to be in the play center or to set up a play center. With this I end up for today's program. I hope you could understand the topic well. Thank you.